These are the notes that I have for the Duke review. Um, these are notes. It's not exactly a script, except sometimes uh, if I want to say something in a specific way to get a specific point across, I will kind of type out word for word what I want to say, but that doesn't mean uh, I won't change it on the fly if I think of something better. Um, the script starts with a cold open. I'm having a guest do a scripted, uh, segment. Um, so that's what this is. What I do is um, I type uh, the the note out uh, in Word and I uh, print it. And then after I print it, I go through and I mark it up. Um, I highlight in uh, pink uh, with a pink highlighter any other figures or vehicles I need to grab for this review so I can have them handy. Um, I've got, uh, so I've got to have the other versions of Duke here. Um, if I don't have any of those figures, then I usually ask for some help with some uh, images of those figures that I can throw in. And Timmer is a huge help with that. Um, and I have, I, I thank him frequently because uh, he's just been a massive help with these with figures that I don't have yet. Um, eventually I will have everything. I am trying to get a complete vintage collection, but I'm not quite there yet. A few missing pieces. So uh, when you see pink, pink highlighter there, uh, that's a figure that I need to grab. So I've got like Stalker because he's got the submachine gun that was used for Duke and uh, Roadblock because he has the green helmet without holes. Airborne because he has the uh, backpack. Um, I also um, add, I, I, if I have anything in here that I need to talk about that um, I didn't type out, then I've got, I have to add it. Uh, this is one benefit of printing this out rather than just using an electronic copy. I can, uh, when I mark it up, I, if I see something that I've missed, I can add. So I didn't, uh, I forgot to put in the notes uh, the bit about the file card backing. I talked about uh, the file card variant as far as the front of the card, but not the back of the card. So, you know, I made some notes there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Um, it. This is, I think, I think it's eight pages, uh, seven or eight pages, um, and that's about average. Um, I th I'm averaging about seven or eight pages of notes for a video, um, and that'll translate. This will. I'm guessing this will be roughly a half hour video. Here's another seg a scripted segment. What I've done is, anytime I need to appear on camera so the camera is pointed at me uh, i just take uh this uh light green highlighter and i um i run a line uh down those uh, sections so um this is the open um and so i've thrown in this little uh scripted segment with my guest uh and so i've highlighted that i've highlighted my own lines on there uh, to make it easier to remember uh, which ones I'm supposed to do and check them off uh, when I've done them. Uh, and let's see. So that means at the back of this, that's where I give my overall impression of the figure um, when, uh, like in the background, I'm doing the 360 spin of the figure, and then I have some still images of the accessories and other things like that. So this is what I intend to say during that segment. And then I'm finishing up with another little brief uh, scripted part. So this is what I've got to work with, and this is what I've been working on for several days. Um, uh, I've tried to uh, get as much information in here as I can. I'm doing my best to make sure it's accurate information. Uh, the sources for all of this information uh, is in a text file, which I will be um, uh, putting in the uh, end scroll of the video. It's important to cite sources, and so all my sources should be in there. Uh, and uh, this since this is the, I always record the core review first. And uh, the core review starts here. 
Um, so this is the page that I'm actually starting with. I'm starting with page two, um, and we're starting with the general information about the, the figure, when it was released, when it was available, how it was available, you know, where it uh, falls in the vintage line, later, um, later versions of the character, and so on. Uh, so uh, that's where we start. And I have my clipboard here just because uh, sometimes I need to move this around or set it on the table or whatever. And then I just find it easier to um, move it around and, and keep it uh, where I can read it if it's on the clipboard. Here is my basic setup for doing a review. I've got uh, my black background here, uh, black poster board um, on the tabletop. Uh, that black poster board is getting a little rough. It's probably about time to replace it. Um, and I've got the two Duke figures set up ready for the first shot of the video. Uh, I am not using figure stands for these guys because um, the plastic is a bit fragile. So I have just a little bit of sticky tack to uh, just stand them up there. Uh, I don't want to put any stress on the, uh, the foot holes for, with uh, foot pegs. I've got the file cards behind them. Um, there's the 4K camera with the microphone pointed at me. Um, I've got a couple desk lamps for lights here, and I do move these around as needed uh, to make sure that the lighting is appropriate. I've got the camera at a slight uh, down angle um, because I find that that's better uh, and easier to see the details on the figure uh, than if you are like dead straight on. Um, so, uh, I just, I find that more, uh, aesthetically pleasing angle. Um, there is my, my clipboard. That's my, uh, notes there. I've got a single backless chair here. Um, I, I don't use a backless chair, you know, because it's better. I just use it because that's what I have. I don't have a better chair right now. Um, so, uh, that's... That, that's where the action happens, but I also have over here, um, I've created this table as like a staging area for the other items I will need in the review. So uh, the figures that I have highlighted uh, on the notes, I've pulled them out here. I've got the other versions of Duke that I have. Um, I've got Roadblock there. You know, I've got the figures that made up the parts of Duke. Uh, such as Gung Ho and Doc and Major Blood. Um, I've got Flint and uh, Beachhead here. Oh, I need to get Hawk version two. I have Hawk version one there. I need to get Hawk version two because um, I think I will talk about the chain of command in the G.I. Joe animated series. And um, if I do that, I may want to show the figures for those characters. Not 100% certain. Um, I'll, I guess I'll just decide. Um, so that's my staging area. That's much more full when I'm doing a vehicle because uh, often I have other vehicles uh, setting up there. But I find it uh, easiest to have, uh, have those over there so I can just kind of swivel chair over and grab them and uh, move them into uh, the frame of the camera when I'm ready. I'm shooting this video with my older camera. Um, it's a Sony uh, HD Handycam. Uh, the 4K camera is what I'm using for the core review. And the final video will be rendered in 4K. But um, I have a two camera setup right now. Um, I will not be doing that uh, in the near future because uh, the older camera I am sending to a friend. I'm uh, sending it out on an extended loan to someone who needs it more than I do. Uh, but for now, um, I use the, um, the HD camera, the older camera, for um, video where I'm in front of the camera, but the video of the action figures where I want it to be as crisp and clear as possible, um, I use the 4K camera for that. But, I, I, but of course, the entire video has to be rendered in 4K, uh, so that if you watch it on your 4K device, uh, it'll, it will come out with that picture quality. 
Okay, I'm set up. I'm about ready to start recording. I'm about ready to start uh, the, the first segment of the review. Um, and there are a few techniques that I use to try to make things a little easier on me. Um, I try to record uh, maybe a paragraph or less at a time. Um, the reason I do that is because it reduces the amount of stuttering and stammering that I have to cut out of the uh, final version. Um, also, um, I want to keep uh, the video moving. Um, and so if I stop the recording uh, frequently enough, I can move in other figures that I need to use. I can adjust the figures. Um, so it's not just me because it's important because I'm recording the audio at the same time I'm recording the video. So if I'm not moving things and if I'm not stopping the video in order to change the angle of things and, and such, then it's you're just seeing a static image on your a screen and hearing me talk over it. So I want to keep the videos visually interesting. And to do that, I need to make sure that it's not static, at least not for very long. Uh, so to do that, I have to stop the video from time to time, move things around. That gives me an opportunity to make sure that I uh, am ready to say the next sec segment without stuttering or stammering. Uh, even so, it often takes me several tries to get through each video segment. Um, so what I will do is um, I'll start that segment. Um, if I screw it up, you know, I'll stop it and I'll just start it over uh, and I'll keep trying until I get what I think will be the final version that will actually appear on the finished video. Um, and then I, then I stop, stop the camera. Uh, what that allows me to do is when I'm editing, uh, I've got a distinct clip for each uh, segment um, of the review each each not necessarily each paragraph but each part um that's going to be a cut on the camera um so that allows me to take each of those and as long as i do those uh, as long as i get each of those clips then it means i don't miss anything and when i uh drop that clip into uh the timeline of the video usually i can look for the last uh take in that clip and that is usually the one that I want to use for the final uh, edit. Uh, not always, but usually um, it allows me to e easily quick and quickly cut out all of those attempts that I screwed up and just use the one that uh, I think is going to be the right one. Um, you'll also notice that sometimes I will um, I'll do a countdown before I start um, uh, speaking and, and uh, talking about the, the figure and saying what I want to say in the review. Uh, that's just to make sure that the audio levels are kind of evened out. Um, so when I, um, when I do the final uh, edit, um, you know, I don't have like, you know, my audio levels way up here at the beginning and, and kind of trails off. I've had that problem a few times before. And so this just sort of helps me when I'm editing, make sure that uh, the audio levels are where they should be uh, when I clip that uh, that final segment. So that's it. Uh, the rest of it is just, um, you know, pointing uh, the camera at these little dolls here and talking about them. So I guess that's what I'm going to do now. All right. This is this is Duke GI Joe's first sergeant from 1983. The figure was introduced in 1983 as a mail away exclusive offer. Released carded in 1984. Duke was released carded in 1984. Uh, he was also available carded in 1985 and discontinued for 1986. He was later available through the mail again from Hasbro Direct. Okay, here we go. Got to make sure the microphone's on. Very important. Okay. Need a two second, at least a two second lead in.
This is Duke, G.I. Joe's first sergeant from 1983. The figure was first introduced in 1983 as a mail-away exclusive offer. Duke was released carded in 1984. He was also available carded in 1985 and was discontinued for 1986. He was later available through the mail again from Hasbro Direct. Not bad. There's a noisy automobile outside, but I don't think that got on uh, the microphone, so my neighbors didn't spoil that shot. That one was pretty easy. Uh, next, um, I'm going to overlay a picture of the order form on this next segment, which will, again, provide a bit of inf both information and visual interest for the video. Um, so I'm going to, I'm keeping these guys where they are for this because I'm going to put an overlay. All right. In 1983, order forms for the, that sucked. All right, let's try it again. In 1983, order forms for Duke were included with boxed vehicles. To order him, you had to turn in seven flag points and one dollar. Um, all right, these, I've kind of broken these next two lines up, but I'm going to try to say them together because this is going to lead in to um, the other versions that I'm going to move into the screen. Um, when I have this first shot here, I try to line it up so that it looks good. You can clearly see uh, both figures and the file card, and it takes up, you know, most of your screen. Uh, I don't want them to be too far away. I don't want them to be zoomed in too much. I want you to see everything, um, and I want it to, when it's on your screen, I want it to, like, take up your screen, right? Um, so, um, I don't mind holding this shot for a little bit, just so that as you're first getting into the review, you know, you have a chance to absorb that image for a few seconds before I change it. But after this next segment here, it will be time to change it uh, because I've got to bring in some other figures. So let's do this. I'm gonna say there are some variations between the mail away release and the carded release. Uh, this is the first version of Duke but there were many versions released throughout the vintage era. Here we go. All right, ready? Three, two, one, here we go. There are some variations between the mail-away release and the carded release. This is the first version of Duke, but there were many versions released throughout the vintage era. See, I'm making it look like I nail it the first try every time, but that is not the case. That is not the case. Um, I'm just getting lucky with uh, these first few lines. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring in later versions of Duke. I don't really care so much about their accessories. Uh, I just want to show the figures. So there's version two, uh, three and four. Now there are a couple, I don't need the file cards for this part. And I think I really only need one of the Duke figures for comparison purposes, and I'm going to put them in chronological order. So I'm moving this one off screen. Uh, version one needs to go over here. Version two over here, three, four. Let's kind of line those up. Now what I have to do with this shot, uh, because I don't have versions five and six, um, Timmer has agreed to send me some images of 5 and 6, and I will thank him uh, on screen uh, with an overlay uh, and the URL for his channel, uh, as I usually do. Timmer, great help. Timmer, good guy, too. I, he's been uh, a good friend, um, a good collaborator, um, really creative guy. Um, I, I like what he produces, and I just... I really love working with the guy. Um, so thanks, Timmer, if you're watching this. 
Uh, so what I have to do is I have to frame this a little bit differently. I've got to pull this out. Um, I don't, I'm physically moving the camera, but I can zoom out a little bit too. Um, I need to get these um, four guys in here, but I need to leave enough room, enough, enough space um, to uh, overlay the images from Timmer. Okay. Um, now I could absolutely do that in post-production, right? I could um, just uh, take a shot that is, you know, wide and uh, crop it, you know, crop it to fit. But if I can just do that in camera where I have this space next to the figures on camera, it saves me the trouble of having to do that. So, I mean, why make things harder on myself? Uh, so I have lined these up where I, um, on, uh, in the frame, I'll be able to easily drop in two uh, images that I will get from Timmer. So here we go. Um, we are going to talk about version two. I'll rehearse this a little bit so that I don't waste too much time recording. Um, in 1988, there was uh, the version two from Tiger Force. It had almost the same mold as version one, but with some updated parts. Uh, all new colors, including, an, oh, including a new hair color. I'm gonna take his helmet off uh, because I want to show the updated hair color. In fact, I'll just, I'm gonna take all of, all of his accessories. He doesn't need them. I'm not, I'm not reviewing version two, so I'm not gonna go into great detail about version two, but I do wanna show the differences um, so we'll do it that way. All right, where was I? Um, including a new hair color, uh, version three from 19, where, version three was, was released in 1992. He's blonde again, um, with a tan and red camouflage uniform. This is desert camouflage uniform. This is not a bad version. I've reviewed this version and I generally like it. Um, 1993. I'm sorry, version five was released in 1993 uh, as part of the, no, I skipped one, I'm sorry. Version four was introduced in 1993 um, in Battle Corps. It had a more realistic desert camouflage and a non-removable helmet. I'm not a fan of that non-removable helmet. Um, version five was also released in 1993 as part of Star Brigade. Um, it was an armor tech figure the same year. Um, it was released the same year as the realistic looking battle core figure. Duke was also released. Uh, Duke was um, in Star Brigade armor tech and he had a missile, uh, missile launcher for an arm, which is insane. I have in my notes, insane. Um, Okay, and then finally, uh, version six was released in 1994. Uh, that figure was also in Star Brigade. It was not an armor tech figure, uh, but it was another space figure. Uh, okay, here we go. Three, two, one, ready? Version two of Duke was released in 1988 as part of Tiger Force. It used almost the same mold as version one, but with some updated parts. He had all new colors, including a new hair color. Version three was introduced in 1992. He was blonde again with a red and tan desert camouflage uniform. This is not a bad version. Version four was released in 1993 as part of Battle Corps. It has a more realistic desert camouflage and a non-removable helmet. Version 5 was also released in 1993 as part of Star Brigade in their armor tech. Okay, I got lost there, but I'm not throwing all that away. I'm going to just start over with uh, version 5. Okay, version 5. I, I, I mentioned armor tech twice. I'm going to mark out that first one that's redundant and maybe it'll make it a little easier to say here we go version 5 was also 
Version 5 was also released in 1993 as part of Star Brigade. The same... Okay. Version... Version 5 was also released in 1993 as part of Star Brigade. The Star Brigade figure was released the same year as the realistic-looking Battle Corps figure. Duke was all... Mm. Um... I need to... Okay, this... This is why sometimes a script might work better. All right, let's try it again. Version 5 was released... Mm. Version 5 was also released in 1993 at... Version 5 was also released in 1993 as part of Star Brigade. That was the same year as the realistic-looking Battle Corps figure. This was an armor tech figure, and he had a missile launcher for an arm. That's insane. Version 6 was released in 1994. It was also a Star Brigade figure, but it was not an armor tech figure. It was a normal O-ring action figure, but it was another space figure. All right. That's good enough for the girls I go out with. Um, um, okay. I'm going to keep this shot for the next um, couple sentences, and then I'm going to switch it up uh, because I'm going to talk about um, him splitting leadership with Hawk, um, and I'm going to... Uh, da, 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 da. Well, all right. I don't know. I'm not sure about how that was written. Let's see. Okay, no. I got I have a plan. I have a plan. It'll be fine. All right. 3 2 1. Ready? Here we go. Most of Duke Okay. Most figures of Duke emphasized his gritty military background until someone in the 90s decided to send him in... Blah. Most figures of Duke emphasized his gritty military background until someone in the 90s decided to... Blah, blah. Uh... Most figures of Duke emphasized his gritty military background until someone in the 90s decided to send him to space. I imagine Duke as always having his boots on the ground. All right, so I've made, I've added an opinion. I've made a point about the space figures, but I'm not going to belabor that point because this isn't a review of them. It's a review of version one. So. Um, for now, I'm done with these guys. Move these guys back over to my staging area. Oops, I dropped a... Uh, dropped a figure stand. There we go. I uh, don't need that. Um, what I need is Hawk. And I'm, for this segment, I'm using, using version 1 of Hawk, but uh, I'm going to have to use version 2 of Hawk for the next segment. Okay, um, all right, I made a quick change. Um, let's see, this recording is um, going fine. Um, okay, got to realign that shot. Let's see, center. Uh, tighten it a little bit. Uh, adjust the angle a little bit. All right. Uh, let's turn them inward a little bit so they're not staring at you in the face. Looks good. Okay. And... Okay. Ready? 
Uh, next segment, it's a long one, but I'm going to, s where am I gonna stop? No, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna flow through this one. Ready, here we go. In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, Duke has had a leadership role on the team. He was the ultimate leader of G.I. Joe when he appeared... Ah, ah. He was the ultimate leader of G.I. Joe when he appeared in the animated series. Later in the series, it explicitly stated that he was second in command behind Hawk. In the comic book series, he became the field commander, though he was slower to fill that position than he was in the cartoon series. Ah... I'm going to cut that last part because that would require too much explanation than I am doing in this segment of the review. And I've, I've written in here a bunch of words that are really hard to say. I could make things easier on myself by not writing words that are hard to say, but that's just not how I roll. Okay, we're recording already. Wow, okay, here we go. In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, Duke has had a leadership role on the team. He was the ultimate leader of G.I. Joe when he appeared in the animated series. Later in the series, it was explicitly stated that he was number, number two, not he was second in command. Bloody hell. Okay. All right. In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, Duke had a... In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, Duke has had a leadership role on the team. He was the ultimate leader of G.I. Joe when he appeared in the animated series. Later in the series, it was explicitly stated, 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 stated. In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, Judah. <coughs> In all forms of G.I. Joe media since the character was introduced, G.I. Joe has had a leadership role on the team. He was the ultimate leader of G.I. Joe when he appeared in the animated series. Later in the series, it was explicitly stated he was second in command behind Hawk. In the comic book series, he became the field commander. Leaving it there. Okay, so this is where, okay, um, my idea is to bring in, I need to get, I don't know, pause this for a second because I need to go get version two of Hawk, which I inexplicably forgot to bring in here. There's Hawk version two. Now, what I wanna do, I have this idea of uh, creating a visual dichotomy uh, between the command structure in the animated series versus the comic book series. Um, so, um, even though I didn't write it down, I recall from Arise Serpentor Arise that uh, the pecking order was Hawk, Duke, Flint, and Beachhead. So I've got Hawk, uh, Flint and Beachhead, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Hawk version 1 here and this Duke figure to just kind of show like Hawk and Duke in the comic book series kind of one and two there and then in the animated series I'm gonna use my other Duke figure um, and we'll go like highest level on the inside and working out so there's flint and beachhead so that's kind of the order uh, that's the command hierarchy in the animated series so I'm gonna have a little bit of space between them not that much space um, just to sort of show a divide there right so we're visually representing um, the difference in the uh, command structure in the uh, animated series versus the comic book. All right, and another visual hint at that is that I'm using Hawk version 2 on the side that represents the animated series and Hawk version 1 on the side that represents the um, 
the comic book. Okay, I'm gonna, let's see here. Uh, come on, man. Come on, Duke, stand up for yourself. Be a man. Stand on your own two feet. There you go. You're supposed to be a tough guy. No falling over. That's not allowed. All right, I'm just trying to get everything in frame in a way that will look okay. And you notice, like, most of the visual interest so far has been created by um, just changing what's in the frame. Uh, not very much in the frame is actually moving. Um, so I, I could practically use still images for this part. And sometimes if, um, if, if something is screwed up and like the audio is okay, but uh, like the, uh, the figures aren't uh, in the position they're supposed to be, or I forgot to put a figure where it was supposed to be, or a figure falls over um, when I'm talking, uh, sometimes I will um, use a still image rather than uh, what I've recorded here, but this is just faster than trying to uh, cut a bunch of audio and then cut a bunch of still images to fit over the audio. Um, if I were to do that, there's no way I could get videos done in time. So um, let's roll with this. Um, let me uh, figure out what I'm going to say. For fans of the animated series, Duke was the first leader of G.I. Joe. When Hawk was introduced in 1986, he showed up out of the blue with no introduction. In the animated series, the command hierarchy started with Hawk at the top, and then Duke was next. After Duke was Flint, and then Beachhead. In the, um, in the comic book series, Hawk was the first leader of G.I. Joe. Hold on a second here. Yeah, for the fans of the comic book series, Hawk was the first leader of G.I. Joe, and Duke showed up abruptly and was given leadership responsibilities. How you feel about Duke probably depends on whether you primarily follow the cartoon or comic book series. Yeah, we like that. Let's do it. Okay. For fans of the animated series, Duke was the first leader of G.I. Joe. When Hawk was introduced in 1986, he showed up out of the blue with no introduction. In the animated series, the command hierarchy started with Hawk at the top, followed by Duke, then Flint, then Beachhead. For fans of the comic book series, Hawk was the first leader of G.I. Joe, and Duke showed up abruptly and was given leadership responsibilities. How you feel about Duke probably depends on whether you primarily follow the cartoon or the comic book series. Okay, uh, I want to, okay, so I've got a segment here about um, Ron Rudas, just a very brief um, discussion of the, uh, the design of the figure. So I'm going to move these guys out of the way. Um, and I'm going to get a close-up because I will probably drop in like a, uh, a stock photo of Ron. And by the way, I did ask Ron uh, if he had any insight about Duke that he wanted to share for this review. And uh, he uh, did not give me anything. So that's okay. That's okay. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to ask anyway. Um, besides, there's quite a bit written about Duke. It's like, Duke is not an obscure character. There's a lot, a lot written about this guy. So there is plenty of research material, <coughs> excuse me, research material to use for a Duke review. Uh, let's see, focus now. Focus, focus. Come on, there we go. All right, hold on. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to frame this kind of from the waist up. Um, but with some space where I can drop an overlay photo. And as much as possible, if I'm using a single Duke figure in the frame, I'm trying to use uh, the mail away one, uh, the one with the flag sticker, because um, 
the extra color uh, makes it uh, a little more appealing, I think. Plus, it's the, the first one. That's the original one. Um, and so I want to use that um, as the example of Duke as much as possible. And then we'll talk about the differences between that one and the retail version uh, in a bit. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, this is just a quick couple sentences, and then I've got another quick couple sentences. Um, and I want to add some kind of motion to the video. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to manually like turn the figure around because I'm going to talk about the reused parts. Uh, but let's get this part done uh, first. Duke was designed by Ron Rudat for Hasbro. Um, Ron was tasked with creating a heroic character. His stature and demeanor uh, are imposing and authoritative. Okay. Duke was designed by Ron Rudat for Hasbro. Ron was tasked with creating a heroic character. His stature and demeanor are imposing and authoritative. Sort of. We'll talk about that. Uh, then, let's see. Here's what I'm going to do for this next spot. Back it out a little bit. Move you out of the way. Okay. Alright, almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost all of his parts and accessories are reused from other action figures. This figure was made on the cheap, yet it is one of the most iconic figures in the entire line. Okay. Alright, ready? Here, uh, no, we're not ready. No, we're not. Hold on. Um, I start recording and then decide that my camera angle isn't good, so now I have to adjust. Okay. There. Okay. There. And okay. Ready? Here we go. Um, all right. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost all of the parts and accessories are reused from other action figures. This figure was made on the cheap, yet it was one of the most iconic figures in the entire line. I don't like how that... Okay, we can do this. Ready? And go. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused from earlier action figures. Not earlier, other action figures, somewhere at the same time. Okay, trying again. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are... Almost... Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused from other action figures. This figure was made on the cheap, yet it was... Yet... Yet it is one of the most iconic figures in the entire line. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory is reused from other action figures. Ugh. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory is reused from other action figures. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused... Okay. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory is reused... <sighs> okay. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and... Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused from earlier action figures. This figure was made on the cheap, yet it was one of the most... Ar blah, damn it. Yet it is one of the most iconic figures in the entire line. 
Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused from earlier, damn it. Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part is Almost nothing on this action figure is original. Almost every part and accessory is uh, fucking Pardon me. I used a bad word. Okay. Almost every Almost nothing on this figure is original. Almost every part and accessory are reused from other action figures. This figure was made on the cheap, yet it was one of the most iconic figures of the entire line. Good enough. Okay. So, struggled through that one. Hopefully that will not be how the rest of the video goes. But there we go. Um... And that is actually the end of that segment. Um, it is now time to uh, stop for a break. I want to take a shower. I want to clean up a little bit. Um, and before I tackle the accessories segment. Awesome. It looks like um, it looks like I uh, had the microphone off for part of the recording uh, of this behind the scenes. So what I'll probably do is a, a time lapse of the uh, video that I have without uh, audio. So uh, that's how we solve that, and, and it'll look like it was intentional. If I didn't mention it here, you'd never know, right? It would look like I intended to do it that way. Um, Anyway, uh, I'm down to the media section. Um, uh, it's it's a lot of reading. Uh, I've set up uh, the I've set up Duke in his hero pose, uh, like on the version one card art. Thought that would be nice. Um, I've got a space in the frame here where I can overlay video and um, comic book images. This segment takes uh, almost as long as the rest of the video to edit. Um, it's, uh, it's just very time consuming. And so what I've started to do is I've started to pare it down to just the essentials. Uh, because a character like Duke appeared in dozens, maybe hundreds of animated episodes and uh, hundreds of issues of the comic book and I can't realistically go into a lot of detail about each of those appearances. So I'll pull out uh, a few, I think, key appearances and talk generally about, um, about how he was used. Um, but I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. Uh, mainly just to help me uh, edit the videos because, yeah, that's, it's tough. It's really hard to finish that media section uh, when I'm editing. Um, but even though I've trimmed it down to what I think is the minimum, uh, Mila Dog is, has decided to come up and join me. Hi, Mila. How you doing? Um, uh, even though I, I've tried to pare it down to the essentials for a character like Duke, it's still pretty long. So I'm going to go through this. Um, I've got my notes here. I'm just going to look at my notes, read it, um, well, I won't read it word for word, um, but I'll look at my notes and uh, talk about it. Uh, and then, then I need to do the 3D spin, um, and then I need to take the still images, and um, then I think I'll be done. Uh, but I think Miss Mila wants to go outside. You want to go outside, Pop? <laughs> Okay, uh, the dog just wanted to play, and so I played with the dog a little bit and gave her a treat. She's very happy now. 
Um, so now um, I'm going to do what I intended to do when I first sat down here um, and, uh, and do the media section. So if a certain pup will not crunch too loudly while I'm recording, that would be lovely. Okay. All right, and here we go. Looking at how Duke was used in G.I. Joe media, he was involved in the animated series from the very beginning. He first appeared in the first animated miniseries in 1983. He was the main protagonist and the leader of the team. He was voiced by Michael Bell. All right. He was in... <clears throat> He was in many episodes throughout the series. He had a knack for getting captured and going into comas. Twice Duke went into a coma, not just in that movie. He had gone into a coma before. Apparently he's coma prone. Um, let's see. Uh, this is the bit about the animated movie and a little bit about the Deke era and that's it for the animated side, like I said, I'm trying to keep it minimal. All right. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He had another coma. He was supposed to die, but dialogue was added that... Re okay. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He was... okay. Okay. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He went into another coma. He was supposed to die, but dialogue was added later that reversed his death. After the backlash from Optimus Prime dying in the Transformers movie, the in the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He went into... Okay. Okay. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He went into another coma. He was supposed to die, but dialogue was later added that reversed his death. After the backlash from Serpentor... from Serpentor... Optimus Prime... okay. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by... Mm. In the 1987 animated movie, it was revealed that Lieutenant Falcon was his half-brother. Duke was mortally wounded by Serpentor, yet he didn't die. He went into another coma. He was supposed to die, but dialogue was added later that reversed his death. After the backlash from Optimus Prime dying in the Transformers movie, the decision to kill Duke was changed. Unfortunately, they had already completed the animation by then, so they had to do it with a bit of awkwardly placed dialogue. All right. Last bit on the animated series. Duke... <clears throat> Duke appeared a few times in the Deke era of the animated series as well. He was a popular character throughout the vintage era. And if I go into any more depths uh, on the animated series, I will be here all day. So that's all I'm saying about it. It's all factual. It's all true. But that's all we got to say right now. All right. Looking at how Duke was used in the comic book series published by Marvel Comics, he first appeared in issue number 22. He and Roadblock shot down a Cobra Rattler that was attacking General Flagg's funeral. 
After that, he started leading the team in the field. In the next issue, number 23, he led an undercover team in the Alps that captured Cobra Commander. All right. Uh, this next segment is about a Larry Hama interview, and I do have something that I can overlay uh, from that interview. It took Larry Hama... <clears throat> It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but no, okay. I know that probably everybody who watches this knows that Larry Hama wrote the G.I. Joe comic book, but I have to present this for somebody who might not know. In fact, I mentioned the Deke era of the animated series without explaining what that was. Some people may, may not know what that is, so I got to be careful about abbreviating things uh, and not explaining them. Anyway, carrying on. It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but on some missions, other Joes took lead took leadership roles. It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but on... Okay. It took Larry Hama... It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but on other missions... Okay, uh... It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but on some missions, other Joes took leadership roles. S took leadership roles. I don't... Okay. All right. It took Larry Hama, the writer of the comic book series, some time to warm up to Duke. He had some appearances, but on some missions, other Joes took leadership roles. Larry said the character of Duke never gelled with him. Duke always seemed like an afterthought, he said in an interview with Toy Fair magazine in 1998. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Go. Duke had some good leadership moments, such as when he led the team on the first attack on Cobra Island in issue number 42. His best first sergeant moment was probably in issue number 82, where he was running drills on new G.I. Joe recruits and selecting new team members. He was harsh, mean, demanding, and merciless. He was Duke. In issue number 109, he led a Joe squad into the fictional desert. Okay. In issue number 109, he led. In issue number 109, he led a Joe squad into the fictional desert of Trucial Abysmia. The squad was captured, and most of them were executed by a Cobra Saw Viper. The loss of the troops under his command severely affected Duke. He had some good moments in the comic book, but he was never the dominant figure that he was in the animated series. Um, okay. Uh, there is an odd appearance of Duke in um, Marvel Comics Secret Wars, actually not in Secret Wars, um, in Amazing Spider-Man. Um, there's a character that looks like Duke uh, and is called Sergeant. And... Um, I uh, just wanted to comment about it and uh, and bring that up. Um, okay. All right. G. 
G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That appealed to me. I wanted G.I. Joe to occupy a space where nobody was bullet booking. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That appealed to me. I wanted G.I. Joe to occupy a space where nobody was bulletproof, except for bulletproof. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That, okay. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That appealed to me. I wanted G.I. Joe to occupy a space where nobody is bulletproof, except for bulletproof. And nobody wears a cape on a regular... Okay, dang it. Okay, I got a flow. Okay. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That appealed to me. I wanted G.I. Joe to occupy a space where nobody is bulletproof, except for bulletproof, and nobody wears a cape on a regular basis. At least not until Dr. Mindbender and Serpentor came along. Uh, okay. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. This... Okay. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was... Oh, lordy. I gotta get through this. G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the... G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. G.I. Joe was... <clears throat> G.I. Joe wasn't part of the Marvel Universe, even though the comic was published by Marvel. That appealed to me. I wanted G.I. Joe to occupy a space where nobody is bulletproof, except for bulletproof, and nobody wears a cape on a regular basis. At least until Dr. Mindbender and Serpentor came along, 1986 was a weird year. Um, okay. But is it really true? Alright. Is it really true? But is it really true that G.I. Joe was separate from the Marvel Universe? Transformers appeared in G.I. Joe, and Transformers were in the Marvel Universe. Also, in Amazing Spider-Man number 268, a character called Sergeant, who looks almost exactly like Duke, makes an appearance. Last bit. Duke had many post-vintage appearances in cartoons, comic books, and live action. He is in nearly every incarnation of G.I. Joe. Okay. That's it. I'm going to take the still images. I'm going to break out my uh, turntable here and do the, the spin. And I'm not going to record that because uh, th there's nothing interesting about that. Uh, but I'm done shooting for the day. That's it. Um, that's the core review. So tomorrow I can do the work in front of the camera, uh, the cold open, uh, the open, uh, the, the overall assessment, the close, uh, all the scripted bits. It's a lot. It's more than usual. So, um, I mean, this is, it's a, excuse me, it's a major character. Uh, I think it deserves um, a, a close look. I think it deserves a thorough review. Um, it, it it should be a long... I don't think you should... I, I would not review Duke and just take 15 minutes and, you know, be done with it. Duke deserves more attention to the, than that. So I'm expecting this to be a fairly long video. Um, but I'm hoping that it'll be a good one. I'm hoping that... Um, uh, that the work that's going into it um, will be worth it. So anyway, that's all for now. Um, I will be back tomorrow for the rest of the shooting, and um, I'll see you then. 
it's the next day and it's time to do the work in front of the camera there is my Sony Handycam right there uh, there's the green screen I've got the lighting set up um, I'm trying to get a nice even soft light on the uh, green screen behind me so I don't have too many shadows um, I have my spot marks uh, in front of the screen um, I have my my scripted parts and my notes. Um, I have my remote to operate the camera and uh, we should be ready to go. Um, right now I'm working with a two camera system. I've got the 4K camera that I normally use to record the, uh, the core review. And then I've got this, which I usually use to record the, the green screen stuff. Um, as I said, this camera is going on an extended loan to a friend uh, so I'm gonna be back down to one camera and it will be the 4k camera uh, so when I'm operating with just the 4k then everything is gonna be shot in 4k those 4k files are really big uh, and they can be a challenge to uh, transfer and to edit um, and the fully rendered video is very large and takes a while to upload but the picture quality is much better and so we'll be in 100% 4k um, here shortly but for the time being uh, I'm still using the uh, Sony Handycam for certain shots uh, now in order to get the full effect of the 4k on the core review I have to render the whole video in 4k uh, but I figure I don't usually need a 4k camera to shoot my mug right um, but anyway uh, it, it's all set up um, this is gonna take a while I've got a lot to do um, so I don't know how much of this I'm going to actually record I'll record some of it uh, so you can get an idea of how it works um, it works much the same as the uh, core review in that uh, I'll stop the video after um, each line when I've when I've delivered the line in the way I think I want it to appear in the final version. I will stop it so I have a clip, and I can trim off all of the uh, failed attempts and just keep the good one. Um, and that's it. So um, I've got the script in front of me, and I've got. Let's see, I need to stand right there in order to be in the proper place in the frame. Uh, the microphone is on. Double check. Microphone is on. Uh, and that's it. It's time to record. Uh, for the first line in the cold open and for the first line of the regular open, um, I, I have to leave a few seconds lead-in time because it fades in. So, uh, here we go. All right. I wrote this so you'd think I would, would have it memorized, but I don't. So I'm going to tune in with my communicator watch. And the line is, hoodie to Duke, hoodie to Duke, come in Duke. That's easy enough. Recording. And action. Hoodie to Duke. Hoodie to Duke. Come in, Duke. It's not bad. I want a, a little bit more lead in, so I'm going to do it again. Action. Hoodie to Duke. Hoodie to Duke. Come in, Duke. Lovely. Next line, it's me, HTC 788. These are short lines. All right, so now essentially I've tuned him in on the watch, so now he's in on a, an imaginary screen in front of me. So we'll, uh, I'll change my attention from the watch to the camera. It's me, HTC 788.
Next line is, know me? We did a video together three years ago. All right, ready? Action. Know me? We did a video together three years ago. I'll do it again. Know me? We did a video together three years ago. All right, the next line is I'm reacting because he calls me Timmer. And I say, no, it's, yeah, it's Timmer. Anyway, I'm doing a fresh review of the first Duke action figure, and I'm inviting you to, and I'm inviting you to join. It's, no, it's, <clears throat> no, it's, yeah, it's Timmer. I'm doing a fresh review, anyway, I'm doing a fresh review of, uh, the first Duke action figure. I'm inviting you to join. Okay. It's important that I get this first reaction right. That's what kind of makes the joke work. <sighs> no, it's... Yeah, it's Timmer. Anyway, I'm doing a fresh review of the first... Blah, 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 blah. No, it's, yeah, it's Timmer. Anyway, I'm doing a fresh review of the first Duke action figure. I'm inviting you to join. I'll do it one more time. Action. No, it's, yeah, it's Timmer. Anyway, I'm doing a fresh review of the first Duke action figure. I'm inviting you to join. I'll just pick which one looks best. Um, next line. I did, but it was a long time ago. My videos were pretty rough back then. I think I could do a better job now. I did, but it was a long time ago. My videos were pretty rough back then. I think I could do a better job now. All right, ready? Action. I did, but it was a long time ago. My videos were pretty rough back then. I think I could do a better job now. No, I don't like that. Action. I did, but that was a long time ago. My videos were pretty rough back then. I think I could do a better job now. I'm not the best actor, in fact, I'm not a good actor at all, but um, if I have to make the choice between uh, acting and clarity, I usually choose clarity, so um, where I could deliver the lines sometimes more naturally, um, I feel like I just want everything that's said to be understood. So sometimes I sacrifice like a natural delivery just to have it uh, more uh, clearly heard and understood. Um, next. Not everything is, for, is perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Not everything is perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Not every ugh. not everything's perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Not, every not everything's perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Not everything's perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Not everything's perfect on the first try. Haven't you ever made a mistake? Next line. That's imp that's impossible. Everybody makes an error. Everybody makes an error from time to time. That's impossible. Everyone Okay, action. 
that's impossible. Everyone makes an error from time to time. That's impossible. Everyone makes an error from time to time. Next, I have to pause because I am reacting to something ridiculous that Duke tells me. So, and I, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit put out with uh, Duke's hy hyper perfectionism. So, it's going to be something like pause. Do you want to be in the video or not? Do you want to be in the video or not? Do you want to be in the video or not? Ready? Action. No. Like I said, action. All right. Now, all right. Focus. Action. Do you want to be in the video or not? Longer pause. Do you want to be in the video or not? A little bit more of a reaction. Do you want to be in the video or not? Last line of this segment. No, it's... Yeah, it's G.I. Joe. Yeah, it's G.I. Joe work. The running gag through this video is Duke keeps calling me by the names of other people because he doesn't actually recognize me. Okay, ready? Last line is... And now there are sirens outside. I hope that's not being picked up by the microphone. Ready? <clears throat> Action. No, it's, yeah, it's G.I. Joburg. No, it's, okay, hold on. No, it's, yeah, it's G.I. Joburg. No, it's, okay, come on. No, it's, yeah, it's G.I. Joburg. Got it. Okay, those are all my lines for the cold open. Now, after the cold open, we have the post theme song. Uh, probably what I'll do is I'll record this and then I'll, I'll cut off the behind the scenes bit because you get the idea. It's just more of this. Uh, so I'll do this segment, and then um, I'll move on uh, to something else. So we start this with the the new standard open that I created for this year. Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This week I'm redoing a review I did years ago. When I first started this channel, I was so eager to show my toys, I reviewed some major characters right away. I probably should have waited until I had better examples of those figures and vehicles, and until I developed my style and format. Let me go through that one more time. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This week I am redoing a redoing a review I did years ago. When I first started this channel, I was so eager to show you my toys, I reviewed some major characters right away. I probably should have waited until I had better examples of those figures and vehicles, and until I developed my style and format. Okay, let's attempt that. Oh, in the following line, this means occasionally I will redo an old video. Let's see if I can sneak that into. All right. Got to be at least a two-second lead-in. Action. Hello, everyone.
everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1990s. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This week, uh, this week, blah, 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 blah. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 780 here. Blah, blah, blah. Slow down. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show, oh my god, okay. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This week I am redoing a review I did years ago. When I first started this channel, I was so eager to show you my toys that I reviewed some major characters right away. I probably should have waited until I had better examples of those figures and vehicles and until I developed my style and format. That means occasionally I will redo an old video. Okay. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This week I am redoing a review I did years ago. When I first started this channel, I was so eager to show you my toys that I reviewed some major characters right away. I probably should have waited until I had better examples of those figures and vehicles and until I developed my style and format. That means occasionally I will redo an old video. All right. Okay. Next, Duke needs a redo. He's one of the most important characters in the entire line. He appears in nearly every iteration of G.I. Joe. He deserves special attention. Something has changed since... Um, okay, I'm gonna... Okay, that's a good stopping point. Duke needs a redo. He's one of the most important characters in the entire line. He appears in nearly every iteration of G.I. Joe. He deserves special attention. I want to just get that part. I don't need the lead-in this time. Duke needs a redo. He's one of the most important... Hold on. Yes. Duke needs a redo. He's one of the most important characters in the entire line. He appears in almost every iteration of G.I. Joe. He deserves special attention. All right. Something has changed since I reviewed. Something has changed since I last reviewed the figure. I was never a big fan of Duke. I thought he was a little too perfect, a little too Hollywood, a little too much like Hawk. He, Hawk, who was the real leader of the team. Something has changed since I rev last reviewed the figure. I was never a big fan of Duke. I thought he was just a little too perfect, a little too Hollywood. A little too much like Hawk, who was the real leader of the team. Maybe it's the fact that I've seen a lot of weird, ugly, and bizarre figures. Now, I want to I wanna just get that paragraph. I think, let's just do that. Ready? Action. Something has changed since I last reviewed this figure. I was never a big fan of Duke. I always thought he was a little too perfect, a little too Hollywood, a little too much like Hawk, who was the real leader of the team.
Maybe it's the fact that I've seen a lot of weird, ugly, and bizarre figures in the last six... Figures in the last six years. I didn't write that down correctly. A lot of weird, ugly, and bizarre figures in the last six years. But Duke has grown on me. I find myself liking the figure and the character more than I did before. That's why I invited the real Duke to, to join us as we look at his first action figure. And then I have to cut there because I'm bringing, I've got a clip of, or I'm going to have a clip of Will as Duke. Um, that I'm, he's going to say a line and I'm going to react to it. So, all right, ready? Ready. Um, okay, maybe it's the fact that I've seen a lot of weird, ugly, bizarre, and bizarre figures in the last six years, but Duke has grown on me. I find myself liking the figure and the character more than I did before. That's why I, w that's why I wanted the real Duke to join us as we look at his first action figure. Let's try that. Ready? Okay. All right, action. Maybe it's the fact that I've seen, yeah. Maybe it's the fact that I've seen a lot of weird, ugly, and what? Bizarre. Maybe it's the fact that I've seen a lot of weird, ugly, and bizarre action figures in the last six years, but Duke has started to grow on me. I find myself liking the figure and the character more than I did before. That's why I wanted the real Duke to join us as we look at his first action figure. As a reaction to Will's line, uh, I'm going to have a long pause, and then I say, H a little bit frustrated, HCC 788 presents Duke. All right. I can do this on the first try if I get my reaction right. Reacting to his line where, once again, he calls me by somebody else's name. Ready? Action. <laughs> HCC 788 presents Duke. Let me do it one more time, just in case I need one more. Ready? Action. HCC 788 presents Duke. I like that one better. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's all I'm going to show you for right now because I don't want to just keep running this camera. Um, I'll finish up the green screen stuff and then I'll show you uh, the next steps. So. See you in a bit. Okay, uh, next phase. Um, I'm not ready to edit yet because I don't have the clips from Will yet and I don't have the images from Timmer yet. So I've decided to start working on the thumbnail image and I'm going to draw Duke. Uh, I'm doing it on my phone because that's the only device I really have to do it with. Um, I'm watching uh, the uh, full force on YouTube uh, as I'm doing this so it's you know it's late in the evening I'm starting to relax a bit uh, and working on this artwork let me show you how I did it this is <clears throat> on an app called sketch um, it is an app that is no longer supported I don't know if you can even get it anymore uh, Sony published it at one point and it's um, the best free app that I found uh, for drawing on a phone so um, this is my canvas here and I'll, I'll kind of show you my process um, by getting rid of some layers here um, uh, I basically started <clears throat> with uh, 
with a, an orange marker and uh, kind of blocked out, you know, where I wanted the figure to be and what pose I wanted to be in and, um, you know, what its proportions would be. Uh, and then on top of that, I blue penciled uh, a bit more detail uh, and kind of worked out where everything was was going to fall. I, I marked out, you know, the eyes and the or the eye line and the center line for the head, uh, nose and mouth, and uh, a little bit of the shirt detail. Added a little bit of detail to his gun. Um, oops, hold on. Eliminate the uh, orange, and so. Um, this is what I started uh, drawing the um, the pencils on. So uh, with a pencil, um, I started actually doing like the real detail. And you can see I um, got some scribbles on the hands a little bit. I'm working on uh, getting those right. Um, so uh, once I had the pencils done, you know, kind of get rid of the blue line and that's what i'm going to do the inks over um this app oops uh this app has um a variety uh hold on there we go uh this app has a variety of um uh tips uh, and pens and brushes and you know other things uh this i want this drawing to be kind of gritty so i'm gonna uh, try to have a lot of really thin scratchy lines and when I do the coloring uh, I'm going to use a brush um, and really try to get a um, uh, a very organic uh, rough feel to it and uh, hopefully that'll turn out good um, and of course there's the color palette and I can you know I can make a color if I need to um, but um, that uh, that's the pencils and on top of that um i have started um oh here we go uh, i have started inking uh so if i eliminate the pencils you can see how much of the inks i've done uh, i've got a long way to, to go i want to kind of get the basic um inks in and then i will i'll add a lot more detail and, and then i will color it so uh, yeah, that's the process. Um, I uh, I don't know exactly where the text is going to go. I'm kind of leaving a lot of negative space so I can move the drawing around if I need to uh, to place the text wherever I want it. Um, but uh, but this is how it works, and this is just on the screen of my phone. That's how I do it every time. Uh, so I'm going to finish this. Uh, it's getting late. Uh, after I finish this, I'll probably go to bed. Uh, and then soon I should get some clips from Will and some pictures from uh, Timmer, and then I will be ready to edit. Okay, I'm editing. Um, I stayed up way too late last night working on this, uh, but I got video clips from Will and I got uh, pictures from Timmer and I just couldn't help it. I felt like editing, uh, so I, I worked on this too late. Um, so I've already put probably a couple, maybe two and a half hours into this, um, and I'm up to the file card section, as you can see there. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, these are the different layers that I have, uh, video and a few audio layers because uh, on some of the audio I needed to adjust the volume a little bit. Um, this section over here, uh, you can see there is a bunch of the green screen stuff that I shot and I've chroma keyed out the green and the chroma key actually looks okay this time, a little better than better than the previous video I think. Um, so and uh, there's there's Will as Duke, um, the the uh, clips that he sent me. So uh, I've spliced those in so we can have a, a conversation. Uh, there is the um, the introduction and theme song, and um, 
there is the title card image, the finished one, and here is where the actual review starts. And there are those 4K files, which um, uh, the editing software has to build uh, proxies for, and that can take a while. Uh, it's this is this part's fairly fr straightforward. I mean, I've got the scripted bits here. I've got my uh, introduction here, um, and we've got the more traditional core toy review here. Um, and I start out talking about the um, the history and background of the toy, and then we move into talking about the accessories. And um, I've got um, these. Uh, lead-ins, these text overlays for each segment. I've wanted to more clearly um, demarcate each segment of the video, but this is the best way that I've found to do it, is just doing these uh, kind of these headers. Um, I had played around with the idea of having like a musical stinger b between each segment, or to introduce each segment. Um, and I actually edited a video that way and I really didn't like it after I saw it. So I gave up on that idea. I might, I might try it again at some time, but at least for now, uh, each of the segments of the video has a, um, has a header, uh, like there's file cards and that should be, um, that should not be plural. I'll, I'll fix that. Uh, anyway, so, um, still some things to fix, apparently. Uh, this, so this is it. Um, and each of the clips that I shot, um, I have placed them. They're not in exactly the same order, but most of them are. Um, I discovered some mistakes that I made and some errors um, during the editing, so I, I have fixed a couple of those. I've cut out a few lines. Um, I have switched a few things around and used earlier takes for a couple of things because I realized that my final take, in my final take, I didn't say certain things right. So I've had to uh, correct myself. And unlike uh, text, I can't just, you know, go into a word processor and clip something out or edit. This is video. So if I've recorded something wrong, I have to find a way to... Uh, work around that, or I have to re-record it. Fortunately, I don't think I need to re-record these bits. I think I've got enough good video and audio here, so I can work with it. Guess I should show you what I'm working with here. Um, this is my folder for Duke. I have 2020 reviews. Uh, there's not very much in here right now because this is a, a new laptop. I had to replace my old one. It was having some uh, hardware issues, some technical issues. So uh, this is this is what I've done so far in 2020 on this laptop. Um, so there's Duke. I've got a folder for Duke, um, and I've got uh, a folder for uh, when I'm including comic book pages. Um, I usually crop the part of the page that I want to use, and I have a folder there for the page crops. Uh, although I haven't gotten all of those, those done yet, I will uh, have to crop some comic book pages when I get to the um, media section, which is coming up pretty soon. This is the raw video. This is the unedited video of all the stuff that I shot. All right, um, so from both cameras, um, that's just the unedited stuff. And let's see, this is the stuff that's actually gonna be uploaded. So that's gonna go in the uploads folder. Right now I only have the thumbnail that I finished. The uh, fully rendered uh, review video will go in here. And also the, um, the early access video. And I think I'm done. This is the final edit. Um, it's the video turns out to be just a little over half an hour long. Um, so I was pretty close in my prediction that it would be half an hour. 
um, I've got um, all these cuts here. Uh, everything from here to here is the core review of the figure. That's the introduction. That's the, well, I guess that is uh, the review as well. That green screen is me talking about the figure. And then the rest here is the, uh, the close. And uh, that's it. I've got multiple layers of stuff on here, uh, text and image overlays, um, kind of minimizing everything so you can see the whole thing pretty much on one screen. Uh, but yeah, uh, every single cut there has to be made. Um, every time something appears on screen, like um, uh, the name of a, a figure and the year it came out, that all has to be put in and uh, fade out and fade in uh, so it's not too abrupt. Um, every time there's uh, an image on the screen, that has to be added in. Um, so yeah, the things that you see on the screen, they just don't appear there. Um, I have to uh, I have to add them. So that is the final edit, and I am ready to render this. There we go. That'll take a few hours, so that's the perfect time for me to make uh, some dinner for the child. There it goes. The final edit is uploading now. It's uh, got quite a bit of time. I get to wait uh, while it uploads. And uh, we're done. That's basically it. Uh, it is scheduled for next Sunday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, my time. Uh, and hopefully everybody likes it. I really enjoyed putting it together. And uh, yeah, it's done. Now I can move on to the next project. I'm sitting on my back patio enjoying some wine uh, and celebrating the completion of another video. I'm pretty happy with this one. I hope everyone likes it. Um, I put a lot of extra work in it. Um, I, I got a guest in a uh, cosplayer to play Duke for me. Uh, that was fun, and thanks to Will for doing that. Uh, Timmer helped out as well, so thank you also to Timmer. Um, and yeah, it's done. Uh, what do I do now? Now I move on to the next project. Um, I'm going to take a week off after the next video, but I want to get the next video moving and get it in the can. Um, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be something from the 90s and something pretty wacky. Um, but uh, it's time to get started. I like Tomorrow is Father's Day. It's Saturday evening right now. Um, so I'm going to be busy tomorrow. Lots of activities tomorrow. Um, and of course, Monday I work. But after work, um, I, re I really need to be writing. I need to be writing. Um, in fact, uh, tomorrow, if there's any time at all, I need to write on the next episode. Um, and, you know, kind of pace myself. So the writing is done maybe by Wednesday evening, and I'm set up and ready to record. So I can be finished recording by Friday, and uh, so I can edit and have everything up, hopefully by um, Saturday evening. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I do put a lot of work into these videos I don't want to be known as just the guy that works hard. I hope I want to produce good videos. So hopefully you see uh, the work that I put into the videos on the screen. Uh, but whether you like them or not, you know, this is what I do. This is my process. Um, I want to end this video with a challenge. A challenge to everyone who creates videos for YouTube on a regular basis. I challenge you to make a behind the scenes video and show us your process. I think most people who watch videos don't understand how much work goes into producing them. And uh, so show us. Also, I'm just curious about everyone's process because a lot of people are doing it like me. It's, it's a one person project. Um, I'm doing everything myself. Uh, I'm not trained to do any of these things, so I had to learn how to do them myself. Um, so another person's method may be totally different. As you made videos and developed styles and techniques, 
you, your process may look totally different. And I'm curious. I want to see how you do it. So that's my challenge. If you make YouTube videos, show us how you do it. Uh, I think that will be very enjoyable. But that's it for this behind the scenes. Um, I hope it was fun. It no doubt is very long. Probably boring, but not. this is not for everyone to watch. This is really just for people who are curious about the process. And I know that'll be a small percentage of the audience, but for those of you who wanna, would like to see the process, I hope it was uh, enjoyable. Uh, that's all. I'm done. This one's in the bag. Now it's time to start the next one. See you later, everybody.